Because of their basic shape, potters have for many centuries copied the shell to produce vessels to be used for functional reasons. And because of the extreme beauty of some species of the phylum mollusca, they have been chosen by China painters to decorate ceramic objects in an often most spectacular way. It is also very interesting to note that our English word for porcelain is derived from the Italian word porcelana, used by Marco Polo to describe the pottery he saw in China. And that is of course because a shell, such as this white cowrie, closely resembles fine porcelain, with its fine white colour and its translucency. But it is in fact the limpet shell which bears the name of Septeria porcelana. The scallop shell, and I just happen to have one, seems to be the shell that has been most useful and most used for ceramic reproduction. Its shallow, hollow shape makes it most useful for many types of wares, the most common being for salts and sweetmeats or confectionery. The ceramic shell can be hand built or cast in plaster so that many can be made from the same mould. Here are, are some, some examples of ceramic objects using the scallop shell. These two very early examples come from the English factories of Corfley and Limehouse. This is a 1795 Chinese export and French Limoges shell dish. And these two are quite modern by comparison and are used as soap dishes. The shape of these two examples of early bow soft paste porcelain salts are inspired by seashells and the bases are encrusted with shells. And here are a few more specimens of single salts and they resemble other shells as well as the scallop shells, including these two very delightful figural salts from the late, 18, uh, late 1900s. It was very fashionable back in the 18th and 19th century for, I suppose, the more well-off, to serve their sweetmeats in elaborate and highly decorative dishes. And as there were usually a variety of these delicacies, the multi-shelled sweetmeats receptacle was ideal. Here are some extremely lovely examples, starting with the very early English ones. From the Derby factory, about 1765, uh, they would be soft paste porcelain. And from the American porcelain factory, one of the earliest ones in America, at about the same period, and another Derby on the right, two beautifully enamelled sweetmeats sweet tears from Bow and Worcester. These examples are called pickle dishes. And here is another Bow triple shelt salt. And a late 18th century Plymouth hard paste porcelain. A lovely example of a Dresden hard paste porcelain with a typical onion pattern and uh, decorated in cobalt blue and a oh, Les Petigan from 1997. And then this very over the top 1865 Minton Majolica oyster server. And while we're on the subject of oysters, back in the good old days, it was very posh to serve your oysters on dishes especially made for the occasion. And here are some remarkably lovely specimens. Scallop shells proliferate and majolica being decoration by colored glazes seems to be the chosen way of decorating oyster plates. And this one is clearly oyster shells. As I mentioned earlier, many kinds of shells have been chosen for creating ceramic vessels. Let's have a look at some of these, beginning with the wonderful 
and ingenious ways the magnificent clamshell has been used. This very early 1748 Chelsea Clambridge also exhibits a beautifully modelled lobster and here are a very fine pair of beautifully modelled clamshell compotes with the shell encrusted bases. On the left is a George Jones Neptune centrepiece and a Bohemian porcelain figurative shell piece is on the right. This one is from the Czech Royal Ducks factory in the early part of the 20th century. And these are contemporary examples of the use of the clam shell. Conch shell presents an ideal shape to be copied by potters. This lovely horrend piece is a purely sculptural version. The English brownfield pottery produced this charming pair. The helmet shell was the inspiration for this remarkable piece. Can you imagine the skill and patience needed to create this piece? On the left, a mussel shell salt, and on the right, the humble periwinkle has been conceived as a bowl of some sort. Here are three different examples of the scallop shell concept as a lidded pot. The Chamberlain's Worcester factory turned out a lot of shell designs and with this very attractive piece much skill and knowledge of shells would have to have been needed to model the various shells shown here with such accuracy of shape and colour. And this gorgeous piece of sculptural delight is actually an inkwell. And here are a couple of very appealing Worcester productions from the late 19th century. This sea star shell was my inspiration for making these small and colourful candle holders. Two of the most exquisite and entrancing sea shells are the Nautilus and the Paper Nautilus. They have motivated many potters to create several enchanting sculptural and functional wares. The paper nautilus has inspired this bellic creation. Two Minton centerpieces are supported by entwined dolphins and the other by arm-hugging mermen. And what could be more appropriate for a urinal than a nautilus shell? An imaginative and very curious idea from the mind of Potter Clark Sorensen. The beauty of the seashell has inspired many porcelain painters and ceramic artists to decorate their wares with shell designs such as these. Exquisitely hand painted to transfer printed. and these tube-lined tiles. There are a few functional wares in which the shell has played a major role in their design. When I started to put this video together, strange as it may seem, I picked up these three charming pieces at our local tender centre. They, they are unmarked, but I think the two smaller ones are German, and the larger one may be Royal Bohemian, Royal Ducks Bohemian porcelain. Uh, all three would date, I think, from about the 1930s or 1940s. Thank you so much for watching.